Hi, in this video we will talk about how to use SQLite databases in R. SQLite is an open source database which is used across many other platforms as well. Most of the mobile applications would use that and also they are available in various other shapes and forms in um, different computers. So SQLite is available in various platforms, but fortunately to use that, we don't have to do any installation. We don't have to do much except to use this library or package called RSQLite. So if I run this, I have our SQLite database available to me. So first of all, there are two ways you can use the SQLite in R. One is an in-memory database. So database gets created when you're running an application. And once you close your application, once you come out from the R session, it is gone because this is in-memory. And the other one is a file-based one, which stores the data permanently on your computer, or on your hard drive. We'll talk about both. So let's get started with the in-memory base first. So in-memory database, I need to make a connection. So I'm saying my connection name is called Quan, And using the DB Connect, I'm saying that I want to use an in-memory database. So I'm making a connection to that in-memory database. So at this stage, I can use my connection to interact with my in-memory database. So let's see, we have empty cars in built data set. Um, using that, I would like to copy this data into my in-memory database now. So I'm saying db write table using my connection called con and the name of the table in your database should be db empty cars. That's the name I have given it. And you can change it to any 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 name. And the data which I want to copy is the empty cars data. So Notice that this the name which you want to give is in quotes, and the data or the data frame which you are going to uh, copy is not in um, quotes. So if I run this, data has gone into my in-memory database now. And how do we prove it that it's gone there? First of all, we can list the tables which exist um, in our connection. So we can see that when I say DB list tables, it is showing me one table, which is DB empty cars. And this was the name of the, of the table which I created. So yeah, so it, uh, we know that our data table exists. Now we can go and read the data as well. We can do two things. We can list the fields first. So we can see that in our in memory database, we have a table called dbmt cars, and these are the field names in that. And then in the next line, I'm going to read the data from there. So there are 32 rows which we can which we can see in our table. Now, what if I do the write table again? So remember that dbmt cars already exist in our database. So I am going to run the same command again, db write table, then let's see what happens. Okay, so it is telling me that the table empty cars, db empty cars exist in your database, and I haven't given any overwrite or append flag in that. So one way to do that is to set a, a flag saying db write table, so it's exactly the same as what we did before, but in this case, we are saying overwrite equals true. That means every time you run this command, the old data is going to be overwritten by the new one. Now you can also do a append. 
for example, if you're currently your table has 32 rows, and let me run this command, which is appending the data into an existing table. So in effect, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the empty cars data again for a second time into dbmt cars. And this is an append statement. So the new rows will start after after 32, so 33, 34. Let me run it. And it says that 32 rows has been copied. So if I run this command saying db read table, now I should get double the records because 32 were the original records and 32 were appended to that as well. So, so now we can see that there are 64 records instead of 32. And let me go ahead and do the same thing again. And if I'm going to append the same data again, another 32 records have been copied. So this is how you keep on appending. And at the end, if you want to, if you're done with your table, you can delete the table. So this way, the table is gone. And to prove that, we can go and list the table in our in memory database. The table is still existing because the delete command would not delete your table structure. Delete command will delete the data. And to prove that, we can run the list fields. You would still see the names of the fields because the empty structure of the table still exists. But if I go and read the data, you would see that it has zero records in there. But if you really wanted to remove your data or, or, and as well as the table, you can do that as well. And for doing that, you would issue a, you would issue a remove table statement. So in effect, you would say db remove table from my connection and the table name which should be removed is db empty car. So if I run this and if I wanted to list my tables again, all my tables are gone. So the structure as well as the data has been removed by using the db remove table command. Now, this is what you can do with an in-memory database. You can do the same thing by storing the data onto your hard drive permanently. So if I, so now let's talk about how to store the data permanently on your computer. And we can do that by writing a connection string and telling that we want to store the data into this database. So I've given it a name, my permanent data. So when I run this command, it should go and create a database called mypermanentdata.tb. And you can call it anytime. So now let me see if I have any tables in there. There won't be any, any data because we just created a brand new database. And now if I wanted to write the data into that, I can use the same commands. I can use exactly the same commands and write the tables and Only thing I need to do is to change the connection to connection to because this time we want to store it permanently. So we can see that we can write data. And now if I go and list it, I can see a dbmt cars table has been created. And if I go and list the fields, I can do that. And if I wanted to read it, I can do that as well. Similarly, you can Remove your table as well in that. So you can use exactly the same statements. All I'm changed is I've actually changed my connection from con, which was in memory, and con2 is actually pointing to a, a location on my hard drive. And if if I close my session and if I start my computer again, this data would still be available until you go and, and delete the data permanently from your system. And finally, let's talk about a concept called transaction. So transaction processing is used in, in the databases um, 
when you want to store the data or you want to perform certain operations and if any of the operations fail then you revert back to the uh, to the the previous state so sometimes and to do that is quite simple as well you can issue a statement called db begin so this tells us that transaction is starting here and db write i want to perform two operations in there db write and db um, append and this is a rollback so what i'm saying is i'm going to start a transaction here and then i'm going to create a table called empty cars and i'm going to append the table but I'm going to roll back. So if I've rolled back, and if I go and check my tables, you can only see one table. You can't see two tables. I created, I was trying to create a new table called empty cars, but because I started my transaction and then I rolled back my transaction, it was never created because it rolled back. So this is how you, do a rollback but what if I wanted to commit my data so yes I can do that um, instead of the rollback I'm going to replace it with DB commit telling it that I'll, I'll begin begin my transaction here write my data and do some other operations on that and then I'll commit it so if I run this block of code my data has been committed and we can actually prove it by going to DB list tables I should be able to see two tables. Yes, I can see a new table which was created because the data was committed. That's why it was created and I can um, perform a read operation and other operations on that table as well. So that brings uh, me to the end of this um, session. I hope you enjoyed watching this and thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next video.